Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. In this lesson, we'll be discussing pronouns. More specifically, we'll be discussing attached pronouns. So as we previously covered, pronouns in the Arabic language can either be munfasil or muttasil. Munfasil means detached, while muttasil means attached. So the de facto position is that pronouns are going to be detached. So huwa, anta, anti, antum, and the list goes on. And we covered these in details in the previous lesson or in one of our previous lessons, and we covered all the detached pronouns. So now in this lesson, we'll be discussing the attached pronouns. So what does that mean? A pronoun like huwa can be attached to another noun. And when it becomes attached to another noun, it changes its form. Huwa becomes hu. Kitabuhu means his book. So his, in Arabic, who is the equivalent of it? Or who is the equivalent of is? And who is the attached form of hua. So it changed its form in order to become attached to another noun. So now in this video, we'll be go we're going to be discussing how do these pronouns get attached and how they look like when they get attached. And also, what exactly do they become even attached to and for what reason? So pronouns can be attached to three things. It can be attached to the three different particles or three different elements of speech. So pronouns can be attached to a ism, a noun, a harf, a particle, or a fi'an, a verb, which are the three parts of speech in Arabic. So a pronoun can be attached to another noun, like kitab. And when I attach kitabun to the pronoun nahnu, which means us, it becomes kitabuna. Kitabuna means our book. Kitabuna means our book. So the attached form of nahnu is na. Like we say rabbuna, for example. Or rasuluna. A pronoun can also be attached to a harf, a particle. So for example, fi. When I attach fi to nahnu, it becomes fina, so inside of us. And a pronoun can also be attached to a verb. So for example, dhahaba means to go or he went. Nahnu means us. Dhahabana means we went. So in this video, we won't be discussing verbs. We're only going to be discussing pronouns when they get attached to a ism, a noun, or a harf, a particle. So first and foremost, when a pronoun gets attached to a ism, it's always going to come to come as a mudaf ire. When a pronoun gets attached to an ism, it's always going to come as a mudaf ire. So kitabuna, kitab is a mudaf, and na is mudaf ire because it's translated as our book. So you're showing possessionship. The way that we show possessionship and ownership in the Arabic language, at least one of the ways, is with al idafa construction as we covered before. So anytime you attach a pronoun to an ism, it's always going to come as mudaf ilay. Kitabuna our book, rabbuna our lord, rabbuka your lord, dinukum your religion, and this goes on. When a pronoun gets attached to a harf, a particle, it's going to come as either this ism harf al nasir or it's going to come fi mahalli jar. We're not going to discuss the one on the right. This one here is not going to be discussed in this video, but rather in later lessons, inshallah. And my main point here is this one on the left here. So when a pronoun or when a harf or when a pronoun is attached to a harf is going to come fi mahalli jar, which pretty much means that it's going to come attached to a harf jar. So pronouns in the Arabic language, they get attached to specifically a particle of preposition or a particle of jar. So fi, min, ala, ila, fina, minka, alayna, the list goes on. So to recap briefly, Pronouns can be attached to any of the three different parts of speech. It can be attached to an ism. When it's attached to an ism, it always comes in mudaf ilay. And when it gets attached to a harf, it always comes, in a general sense for us right now, fi mahalli jar, always gets attached to a ism or to a harf jar. It always gets attached to a harf jar. Now, how do these pronouns look like when they get attached to an ism? And how do these pronouns look like when they get attached to a harf? When a pronoun gets attached to an ism, it looks like this. For huwa, it becomes hu. Kitabuna, his book. For hiya, it becomes ha. Kitabuha, her book. For huma, it stays the same. Kitabuhuma, their two book. Hum stays the same. Kitabuhum, their book masculine. Hunna stays the same also. Kitabuhunna, their book feminine. For the second person, and muhatab, it's the second person. Anta becomes ka, kitabuka, your book. Anti becomes kitabuki, or becomes ki, becomes your book feminine. Antuma is kitabukuma, so antuma becomes kuma. 
so your two book. Antum becomes kum, so kitabukum, your book, like dinukum, your religion, plural masculine. Antunna becomes kunna, so kitabukunna, your book, feminine, plural. For the first person, ana becomes a ya. Ana becomes a ya. So kitabi means my book, and the ya there is the equivalent of I. Rabbi, dini, rasuli, and the list goes on. Nahnu becomes na, kitabuna, our book. So that is how a pronoun is attached to an ism, and it always comes as a mudaf ili. When a pronoun is attached to a harf, it's very similar. Hua becomes hu, hia becomes ha, huma becomes huma also, and it follows pretty much the same pattern for all of them. Now min means from, so min who means from him. Minka means from you, masculine. Minni means from me. Minna means from us, and the list goes on. So that in a brief sense is the attached pronouns, specifically when they're attached to a ism or when they're attached to a harf.